Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and you're listening to Going In Raw, baby. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. And you are going in SmackDown Live! Huh. Hey, this is Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Watch and going in the Raw. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. Hey, Larson, what? it's your birthday. Well, We're going to party. Thank so, you. what? how does it feel, the big 5 1? How does it feel? I don't feel a day over 73, man. Oh, man. I celebrated my birthday uh, just like any old person should. I got up at 5 30 this morning. <laughs> Did you actually get up at five thirty? Yeah, I woke up at five thirty. Oh my god! So really did I, though. To. We're the same. I should text you because I start. I've started to wake up early. The last thing I want at five thirty morning is any sort of human contact. It sucks, though. I am not a fan of waking up that early. No, I didn't. I didn't intend on it. I I was sleeping and I heard a noise and something. I didn't know what time it was. Intruder. No, I thought one of the kids had gotten up oh, for yeah. whatever reason. They were about to come into our room and wake us up. Yeah. So I preemptively woke up. Oh yeah. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm also going to go to the bathroom. Every, no one's coming in. freaking weird brain of yours, man, that old man brain of yours, every excuse he could possibly uh, muster, I know. Mu- yeah. I know, to not to, sleep. To not sleep, to wake up, to screw your day over. Too much going on up here, man. Man, I guess so. I mean, and, I guess, yet, and yet, nothing. <laughs> and yet, mean? there's too much going on, but oh, nothing's yeah, nothing, really nothing going on. Nothing of import. No, absolutely not. No, I know. <laughs> I mean, I went to bed at 1030, so I got seven hours of sleep. It's yeah. not like I'm exhausted. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Yeah, I went to bed pretty early last night, I, too. I sucked down a couple of uh, cups of coffee this morning. That's good. Yeah, I know. I, I drink a lot more coffee in the morning ever since I've been doing the waking mm-hmm. up early thing. I do get a little bit of like stuff done, though. It's just it's, it's like my family's too much, man. They're just all in my business. I'm not getting anything done this morning. I just yeah. sat, I, I just sat in the couch and like played Connect Four on my phone. See, that's good though. That's <laughs> zoning out. I just my zoning out is kind of getting some work done. Mm. Anyways, thank that, you everybody in chat. Thank you for the birthday wishes. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank my you. My wife just texted me a picture of her socks, and the elastic has quit on her. She says, "Why do we own quitters? Cause we're broke." Anyways, uh, so yeah, let's that's why see. I only wear like uh, crew socks when I absolutely have to, like with pants. Otherwise, I don't wear them. Yeah, I only wear those those socks. Yeah, with pants. And then if you got pants on, you can't tell. Uh, no, you can still tell. It still sort of tickles your ankle. No, I mean like if like an onlooker can't tell. Oh, yeah, you can still tell. Yeah. Well, that's all that really matters to me. We got some new patrons man, mm-hmm. on your birthday. Uh, Ty, uh, I I said this name yesterday. I don't think I'm going to say it any better today. Tyrone Bataille, 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 Lord Ziffer, Artificial Marshmallow, mm-hmm. um, and then the Mighty Mushi. Uh, also, hopefully the Artificial Marshmallow will hear this. Uh, they sent a message yesterday saying, hey, I was a $20 patron yeah. a little while back. Didn't get my care package because I forgot to put my address in. Uh, just DM me with your address. Maybe he did. Maybe the address is in there. Make sure I have your mailing address. And yes, you are still eligible. I will send it to you. Um, hopefully that qualifies as a, a DM because <laughs> I didn't feel like typing yesterday. <laughs> anyway, you had all that time this morning too. I know I had so much time. Anyway, I was doing other stuff. I was doing some writing. I was man, those ten for the wind scripts. Those things are those things are like those were a lot more. Those were a lot more easy back in the day. Well, when you get into a rhythm of things and yeah, you're ensconced so. in that particular world. I got to revisit some old memories though. Uh, I was writing an entry on <laughs> Supreme. Melting. Oh God. Yeah, I was writing a little bit about that. It's it's all unfiltered too, man. It's like the stuff that I'm writing right now. There's so many f bombs in it. We're gonna have to find a different way to monetize it. We're gonna need like a super sponsor for it. Well, I'll go through it and see what I can do about that. No, just keep. Bo- I mean, add f's if you want to. That was the joy of ten for the win. I know. <laughs> it was just curse, curse. Put them on. A- I have a vomit scene in it. Okay. I get to I vomit in it. All right, that's good. That's fun. <laughs> Anyways, does anybody poop themselves? <laughs> I will, I will add that in there. All right. Uh, maybe for the number one entry. Um, a lot of people are saying I need a haircut. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm kind of curious what people think about that. One for haircut, two for no See, haircut. I don't think you need to cut it. I think it just needs a little shaping up. Some shaping up? I don't think you need a full-on cut. You just yeah. need a little bit of trim to shape things up because it's getting a little out of control little, back here. You just much. need to shape it up a little, a little bit. Much. bit. Yeah, just a little shape much. Shape it up. See, and that's I, fine. I remember I did this last time i really needed a haircut and it was exactly this you see this it's like a 50 50 split yeah it's like and what better people, way to represent a 50 50 split is just to shape it up a just little getting, bit getting it cleaned up just getting a little cleaned up take it off your ear there maybe a little bit 
shape up the back, and I think it's fine. Oh, I like this one. W. Stein 79 says Steve should dye his hair. Oh, what color? What color should I dye my hair? I want to know that now. Shaq 462 with the super chat, and then we'll get to the, su- uh, oh, the SmackDown man. stuff. Happy birthday, Larson. Get you some mm, mm. Mm, warm peach cobbler with ice cream. Thank you, Shaq. That and then we delightful. had one earlier from Zach Hughes. Buddy Murphy might be my favorite wrestler right now. Hey, man, there's a reason he dubbed himself the best kept secret. Secrets out no longer. Yeah, man, he's, uh, he's fabulous. He's fantastic. So what a great way to segue into talking about SmackDown. Boy, I, I didn't even put up a community poll. I didn't care. I thought it was a stellar show last night. It was night. a fun show. I thought it was so good. We had the reveal. at the. That was the only thing I thought was hilarious. But I was sitting there just like Roman Reigns. Just like Roman Reigns was like, what the? He is so confused. It's like he's in some weird, like surreal David Lynch, Twin Peaks type thing going on right now with his Daniel Bryan Who's attacking Roman Reigns? Thing. What was your reaction when you saw NWO Rowan? Faux well, Rowan. I mean, it was it was spoiled for me. Yeah, so I knew NWO Rowan was going to make it. Derek appearance. Rowan. Yeah, Merrick Rowan. Know, I just didn't know what Derek Rowan looked like. <laughs> and uh, it was revealed. And I was like, all right, yeah, he's pretty much NWO Rowan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sequoia. You can call him that instead of Redwood. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Sequoia Oak. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I thought it was very silly. And it was coming off the heels of just a spectacular episode. That that Daniel Bryan, Buddy Murphy thing. It's really good. Daniel Bryan is probably my favorite thing in wrestling right now. And I'm not even sure there's a close second. If you look at... Is, is, is Daniel Bryan like running creative on SmackDown right now? I don't know, man. He's got... I mean, if you think about this, Buddy Murphy's win over Daniel Bryan last night. Daniel Bryan has no problem making stars. He seems to be one of the most selfless, generous wrestlers there are. He seems to love doing Mm -hmm. that. Um, Buddy Murphy's win against Daniel Bryan last night was such an important story beat that it's hard for me not to believe that Daniel Bryan is at least pitching ideas in terms of what he can do to help. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if... Say he, he walks into work yesterday and, and he sees the the sheet or the, the whiteboard he's he's written there for a match with Buddy Murphy. And if it is a situation where it was said that he was supposed to go over, he'd probably go, mm-mm. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense why I would go over in this scenario. He yeah. needs to win. He needs the win. Yeah. Not me. He needs to win. It actually it furthers the story more if I lose. Yeah, I know. I am I'm very I'm very curious as to what the creative process is as it pertains to Daniel Bryan. We've always known that like Vince McMahon has he really likes Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Like he's been going back a ways like, you know, even Daniel Bryan, I think it was in uh we got a little bit of it in, in like the Nigel documentary. We got a bit of it in Daniel Bryan's uh, uh career showcase thing in 2K where he just talked about, yeah, you know, I I can't I was rehired for like the fourth time, you know. Mm-hmm. They kept on getting rid of him and bringing him back mm-hmm. and bringing him back. There was mm-hmm. obviously something there. Uh, something that we all love that Vince evidently really loves as well. Yes. It's funny. There's, there are certain people that just seem like not the likeliest of Vince guys, but they totally are like Kevin Owens is the other guy I always yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. in that respect. But, uh, but boy, that match and then the finish to that match mm-hmm. with Buddy Murphy securing that win. Mm-hmm. Um, AO worm last week, I think on Matt chat had a, a good question about what matters performance or wins. And it's like Buddy Murphy can put in all the amazing performances that you want, that he can, but if he doesn't get a win... Especially a huge win. And that crowd, and because of that match, and because of... That crowd was so behind him. Mm-hmm. That was that was just awesome. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really, really good. Hats off to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They were a good crowd last night. Killer crowd. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so that was good. I thought the Andrade-Apollo Cruz match was That was really good. good, too. That was really good. I'm not sure how I feel with the Kevin Owens situation right now. He's like... I feel like these are story beats that should have happened before his match against Shane at SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should be done with Kevin Owens versus Shane. Yeah. And honestly, like... like or if a, Shane's going to start... This is the point, where I feel like, in the storyline where when Shane starts throwing obstacles in Kevin Owens' way, this is when Kevin Owens needs to overcome said obstacles. To yeah. actually develop momentum. Yeah. Now he's going to Shane's office apologizing. Mm. I'm. I mean, look, man. I, I can... Got, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, well, I can, I can hope... That that's prelude to him snapping. Oh, this is all prelude to him snapping. I understand that. Nonetheless, uh, uh, and I appreciate they're trying to make Kevin Owens relatable because $100,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Um, however, I don't know. There's a, 
I, I, I want to find a related, sorry, wrestlers relatable in the abstract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you sure. know, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. like I find Kevin Owens relatable because he looks like a, a pretty normal dude. I don't want to. I know he's a family yeah. man. Um, I don't necessarily have to have that worked into the storyline. I don't have to have him uh, crunching his budget to pay off the sign to be an important story beat for me personally. We already have that with Oni Lorcan anyways. He sleeps under a bench. True. Um, with Kevin Owens, I don't want a guy who's going to go into his boss's office after being humiliated and do what I would do <laughs> because that's what he did. He went in there because in reality, what are you going to do? I'm not going to, if I had a boss... I'm not going to go into my boss's office and take a, a Blue Demon Jr. hammer to him, which is what I felt Kevin Owens should have done last night. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go in there and apologize, uh, you know, and try to get that hundred thousand dollar fine. There's, taken there's out. a thing there, I don't want to see Kevin. Owens there could that. be he could be going through this, trying to be apologetic with Shane, trying to get Shane to reconsider, but also in a way have like an underlying threat going on throughout to make it seem like despite the fact that he's doing these things, maybe he's doing these things genuinely, he's still dangerous to a certain extent. Yeah. I think if there was at least that element included, it, it might work better. Mm -hmm. But now it just it seems like, all right, well, I'm defeated more or less. I may have yeah. won that match, but, but, but Shane's got me. Yeah. So now I gotta, I gotta, uh, you know, pay my respects to him. Mm -hmm. Don't want to see that. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Unless there's something, underlying going on there like we all know that at a certain point he's going to explode and he's going to stun everybody mm -hmm. um i just feel like that's those these are the beats that should have led up to the SummerSlam match as opposed to following them yeah yeah and that was the point where sort of like with with austin and mcmahon where mcmahon was just constantly throwing obstacles in the way of of austin there would be stumbles but in the end austin would overcome i do kind of i do appreciate though that they are taking a different route they're not trying to just do the stone cold blueprint because oh, totally. stone cold was never apologizing. He was never trying to take the diplomatic route in the no. first place. No. It was all just, if you're literally standing in front of me, you're going to get stunned. If mm -hmm. you're in my periphery, you're going to get stunned. Mm -hmm. With Kevin Owens, they are grounding him a bit more. Um, but and I appreciate that. So I just feel like yeah. at this point, this, this is stuff that should have happened before. Yeah, they've already been through wars. SummerSlam. Shouldn't, they, they shouldn't, yeah, he shouldn't be trying to revert. He knows what Shane is. Yeah. You know, we all saw the referee reveal come a mile away. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I thought that, uh, I thought that otherwise it was good stuff. I like the, uh, the, the pairing of Sami Zayn and Shinsuke could be interesting. Although I'd kind of want to see that as more of a faction than just um, two well, it almost guys. sounds like a manager wrestler thing, which I'm not into. No. Cause yeah. Sami Zayn's a wrestler. He needs to be wrestling. Although someone in chat said yesterday, I think it was yesterday, that, that Sami's shoulders still aren't 100%. Yeah, I saw that too. I think that was on Twitter. Or no, maybe it was in the YouTube comments. I don't know. It was something. Somewhere. And, and so maybe that would explain why they're not having him wrestle a whole lot. That could be. And why they're going to have him kind of be Nakamura's manager. Yeah, that could be. Like, oh, no. Oh, dear. Wow. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Epico. Epico chimes in with his only super chat of the day. Yes, hopefully. The lone one. A hundo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Epico. Thank you, Epico. He says, happy you're, birthday. You're, 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 you're exceedingly generous. That's like a, a wealthy grandma mm -hmm. sending you a check. And you open up like, wow, grandma. Wow. Geez, grandma. Wasn't expecting that. Thank you. But <laughs> he was it for the last couple of minutes. I noticed I sort of have half an eye on chat here. He was trying to send that and it wasn't going through. But then Epico. Uh, Perseverance paid off. He huh? went over. Super yeah. chat did the job. Yeah. He came through. Thank you, Epico. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious! Anyways, oh yeah, no. So Devil Kazuya here in chat says, "Does Steve get a piece of that hundred? Yeah, no, I do. Google takes their cut. Yeah, uh, and then you get what's left over." No, oh, Rich Hardesty said, "Steve, FYI, you did post a community poll." <laughs> yes, I totally forgot. I did. I forgot that I'm on top of my game sometimes, right, man. Re report on community poll, All please, right, let's Steve. Let's take a look at community poll. <laughs> I like that Rich Hardesty sent a super chat to remind me of that too. Man, we are just. We are being carried on the shoulders of our community. Absolutely. We really are. Absolutely. 45%. <laughs> this is how many votes? 2,000 votes. 45% said yay. In between said uh, was 17%, which is a whopping 50, 62%. 62%. 62%. Nay was only at 6%. Uh, don't plan to watch. 21%, which is actually above Raw's that's, number. That's pretty high for SmackDown. Uh, plan to watch later. 12%. So uh, all in all, everybody had a pretty positive view. Yes. Positive view. So, yeah. 
Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, anyways, Larson, before we continue, here's a word from our sponsor, 4 You know, Larson, with what? age comes wisdom, but getting old can also be a downer, especially in one area, specifically the front area. 40% of men struggle with ED by the age of 40, but why would guys turn to odd solutions or worse yet do nothing when treating their ED when they can turn to medicine and science? Science! Of course you go with medicine and science. That's right. And we're here to tell you that thanks to science, ED can be optional. 4 connects you with real doctors and FDA-approved products to treat your ED. We're talking prescription solutions backed by science. It's hard made easy, and it's totally confidential and completely discreet. Just answer a few questions about your medical history, and if approved by the doctor, hymns are shipped directly to your door. That means no more super awkward conversations with your doctor about your front area or long wait times in line at the pharmacy. And right now, you can try hymns for a month today for just $5. We'll get you started for just $5 while supplies last. Prescription products are subject to doctor's approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. <clears throat> See website for full details and safety information. This would cost you hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. Go to 4 slash G-I-R-5. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash G I R five. For hymns.com slash G I R five. So uh SmackDown started out with Randy Orton promo. Yeah, he he was making his case why he feels that Kofi is stupid. Yeah, I uh, really like this. When Randy Orton is when Randy Orton is motivated, mm -hmm. when he's having a good time. And when he's a bad guy, he is. That is for me. That's that's prime Randy. That's I want to see him get beat up. Yeah, no. You, you like Randy has built up such a legacy, such a such a resume that he is so legitimately equity. He's built up a lot of equity in 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 that house of a career. Of his yeah, uh, that's a good word. That's why I use it all <laughs> the time. Ap equity. Apropos for uh, uh, these days for uh -huh, us. Uh -huh. uh, he's built up so much equity. That like that heel heat is real, man. Yeah, man. When he's just a when he's just a real light profanity, mm -hmm. man. Oh man, I want to see him get beat up. That's yeah. that's the good. Like Baron, I just want to see him go away. Just go yeah, away, no. Baron. I know. I like he gets beat he up and you laugh. You're right, exactly. Yeah, because he tr he tries to act like he's better than everybody, but I know deep. I'm like he's not better than anybody. But Randy, man, he's got the bona fides. Yeah, exactly. I want to see that guy get. Beat it's up. interesting that that he's managed to. It almost seemed like at this point in his career, he, for a stretch, he was getting legacy pop, regardless of what he did. He come out. He drops one of that RKO people to mark out for, and still to a certain extent that still happens. But it seems like he's gotten to the point now, uh, especially after that Jeff Hardy feud, where he's doing all sorts of messed up stuff to his ears. Mm -hmm. uh, he's transcended legacy pop, circled back around to getting like actual heel heat. Yeah, yeah, you know. No, I know is, it's great. Which is good. It's great whenever he's whenever he turns it on, and it takes it. it it's. You know, they're, they're using the history of Kofi and Randy with the stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's good. That's that's really good. But, you know, Randy just has that air, even off camera, like on Instagram and stuff. He just has this air like, man, this dude really thinks he's better than everybody mm -hmm. else, you know. And mm -hmm. he plays that up so well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know? And absolutely. it's fun to see him like goofy on Instagram and stuff, like RKOing his kids or having them RKO him or whatever. But like he just projects that so I perfectly. I, I mean, know. that's that's what he's had going for him since day one. Oh yeah, he he's able to project that air of arrogance mm -hmm. better than just about anybody. Yeah, it's uh, it's good stuff. So he he lays out his case, Epico. Epico, just stop now. All right. Uh, he lays out his case based on recent events. Why he, he gave he, us a tip, a twenty five dollar tip for the waiter. I'm just gonna well, at, waiter gets his tip after I get my cut, and Google get the, gets their cut. Okay. <laughs> So he's he's saying uh, recent events like Kofi ran away from a fight at SummerSlam, um, uh, watch you know making him watch uh, Xavier Woods getting his knee stomped on. Mm -hmm. um, all he says is, in his mind is evidence that Kofi again in Randy's mind is stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's about to conclude his promo saying, you know, you're going to get dropped by the three most devastating letters in sports entertainment, RKO. Cue New Day's music. Uh, he turns to face the ramp 
expecting Kofi or, or, or Big E to run down, although he he's, didn't even mention that Big E was... No, that was a revival. I think they mentioned the Big E was elsewhere. Um, so he's facing the ramp expecting Kofi to run down that way. Instead, uh, Kofi's behind him. Mm-hmm. He kind of puts two and two together, turns around, eats the trouble in paradise. Yeah. Um, and then Kofi goes, gets a chair from ringside. He puts around Randy's ankle, goes to the second rope like he's going to stomp on it. Revival come down, try to make the save. Kofi fends them off with... With the chair, Randy rolls out of the ring, flees up the stumbles and flees up the ramp. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It was good stuff. Yeah, no, I thought it was really good. I like that they had Kofi immediately when you see him. It's action now. Um, you know, none of this, you know, coming out and cutting a promo, being sad about things. He saw his best friend get his leg busted up. Uh, he comes out, and he's the one who's action now, putting that chair on Orton's leg, ready to destroy it. I liked it. It was good. It. It, it was, was good. It was, it was all action now last night. Except it for, was. Except for Owens. It was. It was apology now. Yeah, that was weird. After that, we had a Roman Reigns recap. Yeah. They love these Roman Reigns They recaps. really do. They're getting a lot out of that, though. It's okay. They're getting a lot of mileage out of it. And after that, they ran a, a hype package for NXT on USA. Mm-hmm. Screenshots yeah. of uh, mainstream press coverage with pictures of NXT talents. Final one being undisputed air. Heck yeah, man. I saw uh, Kyle O'Reilly. I saw Reed Dragon's uh, little, uh, they did like a little Twitter video where they, where they talked about their thoughts about the move to USA. Kyle seemed more obsessed with the money he's going to get. He's going to purchase a yacht that's so big, the lifeboat is another smaller yacht. He wants one of those Jeff Bezos yachts, yeah? Yeah. You seen that thing? No. It's like a city on the water. That's not it's humongous. Yeah. Meanwhile, Amazon workers are getting paid peanuts. Like literal, you should you should look you should look up Jeff Bezos yacht. I saw a picture of it and I was like, this is can't be this is this is something out like a cartoon. I'll do that now. It's it's astronomically large. Uh, After that, uh, Shane's backstage. Kevin Owens walks in. Um, He talks about how preoccupied his mind is. Enormous, huh? Why would you ever need? It's four hundred million dollars. It's huge. Oh, but hold on a second. August fourth. This says Amazon. Oh, a photo of a $400, $400 million yacht rumored to be owned by Jeff Bezos went viral, Viral, but Amazon says it's not his. Oh, okay. He has mm. a different $400 million yacht. The maybe. fact that there is a $400 million yacht out there, somebody owns it. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. It's enormous. Yeah. So Kevin Owens is talking to Shane. He still has his mind on the $100,000 fine. Um, and again, he asks Shane. He appeals to, to Shane as a father. He says, I know you're a father. I know you're a good one, he says. Mm-hmm. Um, and this amount of money might not mean a whole lot to you, but it means a lot, a lot to me. Mm-hmm. It means my, my children's education future, educational future is a mortgage. Uh, you may not understand that, but as a father, you got to understand that, you, you know, you're, you're, you're taking bread off the table for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he says, Shane, I'm going to ask you to reconsider. And Shane just says, all right, I'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah. After that, hell of a match between Andrade and, and Apollo like, Crews. What doesn't Owens like try to shake his hand and then Shane says, "We're not there yet." Yeah. Oh, oh man, just it should have been the other way around. Just hammer mm, right to the hand. It should been the other way around. I know. Shane says, "Okay, I'll well, think about it." No, nah, because that's I. It should, but Shane is just. It, it's just. I, I get it. He's he's a piece of crap. Yeah, Kevin I get Owens it too. Has been waiting all week. He's formulated this plan. I'm gonna swallow my pride. Be Mr. Nice Guy. I'm gonna extend this olive branch called a hand shake. And and then Shane says, "Oh, the hammer, hammer on the fingers." Yeah, dude, and on the back. Yeah, back of the head. Like, no, we forgot to mention during our recap of that is the 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 champagne bottle. There was a bottle spot in that match too, <laughs> wasn't there? That sounds right. There Pretty was, sure there was that, a lot uh, going on, man. That, uh, someone got a bottle broken over their head in that match. There was a lot going on. Uh, next, Andrade versus Paulo Cruz is a hell of a match. It was fantastic. Um, there was that one spot kind of early on before the commercial break where almost goes the top rope and Apollo Cruz hits him with a drop kick in midair. He got some good height. Yeah, on that. that, was, that great. was cool. That was really cool. I like they they cut to a great reaction of Zelina Vega there. She was like, oh, "What? You can do that?" Um, later on, almost goes for a, a slingshot Hurricane Rana ringside, and then Apollo Cruz catches him like he's got a power bomb, and then Andrade uh, Rana's him anyways into the ring steps. Mm-hmm. Then we go to commercial. Yeah. Well, it's picture in picture, and during the picture in picture commercial break, we see almost working over Apollo Cruz's arm. Yeah, but the for the first like the for, during the entirety of the first commercial, it was just a camera on Apollo Cruz laying there. 
I was like, oh, this is a good time for a commercial because he's literally just dying right now. But yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, so uh, Andrade starts working over Apollo's arm, and then Apollo goes for a press slam. His arm gives out because Andrade was working it over. Uh, Andrade sends him in the corner, goes to double knees. Uh, Apollo evades. He has a standing shooting star press, uh, gets a two. Um, commentary, no Corey Graves. we got David Otunga. Yeah. I didn't think he was terrible last night. No, he wasn't. He actually had direction because he was in the Corey spot of trying to heal him up a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was especially effective when he actually got to use some legal jargon when he was talking about the false confessions or the coerced uh, confessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought, yeah, I, I actually thought he was pretty decent last yeah. night. I think it was because he had direction. I yeah. really do. Yeah, like, yeah. If he were to replace, uh, like, Byron, because Byron is decent, but he's a bit directionless, you know? Like, when you're just, like, normal commentator guy. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have much of a direction, not much for you to do. Mm-hmm. With Otunga, because he was in the grave spot, he had something to do. Yeah. Um, and, and commentary is really putting over uh, Paulo Cruz athleticism saying, you know, uh, we see him do the same comparable things as Ricochet, mm-hmm. but he outweighs him by 50 or 60 pounds. Yeah. Um, I think it was this shooting star uh, press spot that really elicited a lot of those comments. Um, at the end, though, uh, Apollo Cruz has almost in like a headlock to try to get him away from the ropes. Zelina holds on to Andrade's foot. Uh, Cruz let go, lets go of the headlock, starts yelling at Zelina, turns around, eats the back elbow, followed that with a hammerlock DDT. Andrade gets the win. Mm-hmm. Epico dropped $5 on it. You know how much a haircut is? He just dropped five dollars for my for my haircut. It costs like fifteen these days. I'll cut, I'll cut your hair for free, man. Nah, man, no, that's not. Mm-mm, no, no. You know what? You know what? Did you go to? Did I not pay? To, did you go to beauty school? I need trained professional to take care of my locks, man. I've been I've been cutting my heck? hair since I know, man. Two thousand two. I know. All you do is take a razor to it. Well, not a razor, trimmers. Trimmers. Yeah. So it's different than like shaping up somebody's head. No, oh, man. Yeah, dull look off your face. <laughs> Let me cut your hair. I'll do it for free. You can keep that $5 that Dakota sent you. Nice. Well, actually, it's Google really, takes their cut. What's well, 30 uh, <laughs> Three fifty, five seventy five. <laughs> Epico, hop on uh, Streamlabs instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after that, we have uh, uh, Daniel Bryan and, and Rowan backstage. They're bringing in somebody who's got like a shroud over their head, <laughs> so we can't see him. Yeah, this is like a, a Guantanamo Bay type situation. Yeah, yeah. So they bring him into the locker room, sit him down, and uh, Brian da- uh, Daniel Bryan says, uh, uh, "You know, we know what you did." And we're, you're going to tell everybody what you did. Mm-hmm. And if you leave this chair, you're going to be really sorry. This is oh, horribly illegal. This is actual. This is literal criminal activity. They bring this dude in. False imprisonment right here. This is yeah, actual kidnapping. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I know like threatening somebody is illegal also. Yeah, you can't do that. Physical violence. You can't do that. Uh, yeah, this could have gone wrong so many ways. Oh, yes. <laughs> Like this is on TV. This is the thing that kind of bugs me, man. It's like this is happening on TV. Why didn't somebody just call the cops? I know. <laughs> Unless they were just all just like, wait, he's gonna reveal who attacked him. You gotta. I know you gotta mm-hmm. suspend disbelief a little bit. I guess. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, so yeah, they do that. Then uh, Elias is backstage. Uh, he spots uh, an incognito, undercover John Cone. Yeah. Uh, the ref. Yeah. And uh, and he just, he had a fresh haircut. You should get his haircut. Find out who his barber is. Who John Cone? He had a fresh haircut. Where were they? They were in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Oh, that's I got a I got long ways away. Well, man. I, I I know some people there. I might be get a recommendation. I'm not gonna fly to Sioux Falls. It's a lovely town. I'd like to see Deadwood. That's nearby, isn't it? It's a bit of a drive. Well, I would take a horse. That's how I know. It's gonna take from, a bit longer. From Deadwood, go to Sioux Falls from Deadwood. Okay. How far is that? It's probably a four hour drive. By horse, damn it. Oh, a day and a half. <laughs> Don't you want to go to Yankton? <laughs> <laughs> I got to go see the magistrate. Yeah, I got to go to Yankton to see the magistrate. I heard bad things about the magistrate, though. Yeah, I heard anyway. a few <laughs> negative reviews myself. He is a heavy profanity. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, he spots John Cone in hat and, and jacket. Uh, he says, hey, where is he? John Cone points to road case. Uh, Elias opens Roadcase, and inside is Drake Maverick. He goes, surprise, realize he's the one that's been had. 
when Elias grabs him by the throat. Mm-hmm, yeah. And then uh, uh, Elias makes Drake uh, read a letter which says that uh, since Elias has a King of the Ring match tonight against Kevin Owens, 24-7 rules have been suspended. Suspended. Yeah. Crap, forgot I wasn't doing a... <laughs> time time pieces Oops. time stamps Oops. anyways uh <clears throat> so after that we had uh, a moment of bliss with the queen charlotte yeah uh i thought this was really fun uh epico just dropped 15 for my haircut he says don't make me unleash the full power of the epico bank card okay it's not a me man it's 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 freedom of will i i could just say don't do it yeah that's all i can do yeah anyway yeah uh yeah moment of bliss uh charlotte comes out First, Bliss and Nikki Cross do their pose so that everybody understands that they are tag team champions. And I believe on their on their drink balls, they have like little title belt cozies mm, on them. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so Charlotte comes out, and uh, Alexa Bliss says, uh, "Passing of the torch, Trish Stratus. Yeah. That match, passing the torch." Charlotte says, "Well, she's uh, the queen of her era. I'm the queen of all eras." She didn't pass the torch and took it from her. I took it. I'm Charlotte. I says, I'm the face of the SmackDown Women's Division. And then Alexa says, well, people, not me, but people might say Bailey is and she's champion. Charlotte says, no. Uh, Bailey do the appearances. Yes. Media, ESPN. Red carpet stuff. Movie premieres. Uh, championships are relevant, essentially, unless they're on her waist. Openings of Shoney's restaurants. That she is SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Bailey comes out. And she says, Charlotte, you could take all the appearances. I have title belt. That means I am better than you. Yeah. And then Charlotte says, well, she's going to bring prestige worldwide back to that championship belt. Black leather gloves. After she beats her Mm -hmm. at Clash of Champions. Mm -hmm. Challenge issued. Bailey accepts. She's about to walk away. Says, oh, I got one more thing to say. And just pushes Charlotte off her chair. (laughs) She has a big smile on her face. That was so good. That instantly got, see, man, it's really easy. The crowd just wants to see people do cool stuff. Uh huh. That's all they want. They I want know. to see cool stuff. I know. You can turn them around like that if you shove somebody over in their chair. It was like a nasty little spot. It was all awkward because she that hits was great. the table. It was great. And Charlotte, the look on her face was great. That just was humiliated. So it was so good. The crowd started chanting for Bailey. It was good. <laughs> Bailey just had a big old smile on her face. Oh man, I see this this Bailey. I can use all day long. I think I could. I could just. I oh, love it. It was it's great. great. It's not like, oh, look at me. It's like, I'm going to push you over in your chair. Action now, man. Action what people now. Want, they just want action now. They want action now. So that was really good. Uh, after that, we had uh, Buddy Murphy. He was backstage. Roman Reigns, he's backstage. He confronts Buddy Murphy, says, okay, who are you lying to? Me or Daniel Bryan and Rowan? And, uh, <clears throat> and Buddy's like, Man, look, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I saw Rowan back there. And Roman Reigns is like, what do you mean pretty sure? What, what does that mean? And he's like, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I just I saw somebody. Says, I think. Looks like Rowan, you're back there. You're doing stuff. I'm minding my own business. I wasn't supposed Rowan to be there. It was an accident. There. It was an accident. I was milling about. What do you want from me? Uh, I, do, I do wish that Buddy had asserted himself a little bit more. Like, look, I don't know. I didn't go and, and do a DNA test on the guy. I just saw somebody, Roan is very distinctive looking. What do you want from me? You know? Like, I wish that he, they, they wrote him up a bit more assertive in his, like, still, look. But the thing is, he's, he's new, new, Steve. But he's new. He's trying to make friends. Steve. And that's the big dog. Mm-hmm. Last time he was assertive with, the, or dare I say defiant with, big dog, he got, he got tossed around the locker room. <laughs> so. That's a good point. That's a good point. But so I, I he's like He's trying what? a more diplomatic approach. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. See, this is a scenario where I think, oh, diplomatic approach, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you don't get thrown around the locker room for the third week in a row. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Whereas Kevin Owens, I feel like time for diplomacy is past. Yeah, action now. Action now. Uh, Which takes us to uh, one hell of a match between Daniel Bryan and Buddy Murphy. Oh, boy. Uh, Daniel Bryan comes out and drops a promo, calls Buddy a liar. Mm -hmm. Says, uh, we have the culprit, and I'm going to prove that, Buddy, you were involved in it too. Bell rings. Buddy drops Daniel Bryan with a V trigger. Mm-hmm. Immediately goes for the goes for a pin, gets a two count. Yeah. Um, good back and forth action. There's a commercial break. Come back from commercial, and Buddy's selling arm injury. Mm-hmm. So he just kind of had to put it together that Daniel Bryan was working over Buddy Murphy's arm during commercial break. Yeah, been cool to see it, but we didn't That'd see been it. Been nice. That'd have been nice. It would have been nice. 
Um, and then uh, later on, uh, Daniel Bryan locks in a yes lock, but he's trying to go for the ropes. Daniel Bryan transitions into a nasty looking rings of Saturn. Uh-huh. And then he grabs Buddy's leg, too. He's doing some Zack Sabre Jr. type stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, Buddy frees himself enough, um, even though Daniel Bryan tries the yes lock again. LaBelle lock. He gets to the ropes. Uh, this next bit was great where Daniel Bryan was hitting Buddy with uh, yes kicks and yells at Buddy to stay down repeatedly. Like, I, he, I'll kick him. Stay down. Kick him again. Stay down. This was, uh, yeah, this was. One of the more cra- – it's funny. Like, when you're doing the yes kicks, nine out of ten times, the guy goes like – he just gets on his knees and goes like this and just takes them. Yeah. Buddy was all over the place, and Daniel Bryan was just kicking him wherever he could. Mm-hmm. It was a much more – every – I've said this a million times. I'll just reiterate now. Every single thing Buddy Murphy does is done to enhance the story in a realistic manner. Yeah. Um, if, if you're getting kicked by a guy, you're not just going to stiffly go like this and just basically – try to take it mm-hmm. you're gonna get hit by a kick you're gonna yeah. get kicked and you're gonna sell whichever direction that was going and I if know. it hurts you're gonna go this way if it hurts you're gonna go this way and that's what buddy murphy does you want usually daniel bryan does all the yes kicks to the chest daniel or buddy murphy took at least one to the back yeah yeah there was like one to the shoulder yeah it was all over the place it, it came off as the way it should exactly happen um and then uh daniel bryan talks more trash goes back for the last kick uh, Buddy gets up, responds with a kick of his own. Um, later on, Daniel Bryan puts, he hits a belly to back suplex off the top rope. He goes up again, puts Buddy in the top rope, maybe for a top rope Hurricane Runner or something. Buddy escapes, hits Cheeky Nando's, and a running powerbomb for a two. Um, Buddy evades a knee plus, uh, hit, gets uh, Daniel Bryan in a backslide, gets a two, follows that with a couple of knees, uh, a brain buster. Uh, Daniel Bryan gets his foot on the rope. Rowan gets on the apron. Uh, Buddy goes for a, 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 a roll-up. Sorry, Daniel Bryan goes for a roll-up. Buddy kicks out, and kicking out pushes Daniel Bryan towards Eric Rowan, who's on the apron. Mm-hmm. Daniel Bryan puts on the brakes. Uh, Buddy from behind goes for a kick. Daniel Bryan gets out of the way, kicks Rowan off the apron. Yeah. Uh, another uh, roll-up attempt, and then uh, uh, Murphy hits a V-trigger and his finish, Murphy's Law. For the win. Shocking. Shocking, but so great. Mm-hmm. Just absolutely great. And Daniel Bryan still has all the credibility in the world. When he loses, it means something. Exactly. It matters and it advances the story. Exactly. That's what you need. Exactly. So uh, next we get a quick shot of uh, Rowan's, Roman, sorry, attacker backstage acting kind of nervous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, man. He's been, been literally kidnapped. Yeah. You know. Uh, after that, we had uh, Buddy Murphy. He was uh, about to be interviewed. Nope, he was attacked by uh, Rowan and Daniel Bryan. Of course, obviously, Daniel Bryan is fairly upset that uh, Buddy Murphy just got that win. Yeah. Uh, Rowan drops Murphy with an iron claw on a road case, all the while Daniel Bryan's like screaming at him. Yeah. Liar. That was awesome. Yeah, liar, liar, liar. So you're the worst type of liar. You're a cowardly liar. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, the Revival. Uh, they come out for their match against Heavy Machinery. They drop a promo. Saying they want a SmackDown tag team title match at Clash Champions. They talked some trash to New Day mm-hmm. uh, about how they uh, destroyed Xavier Woods' leg and said, uh, we know Big E's not here because he's at the hospital with Xavier. No, he, st- he said, they're, he said they're st- he's still at Raw. Yeah. Tending yeah. to Xavier Woods. <clears throat> Out come Steve's favorite tag team, Heavy Machinery. Well, I mean, the cool thing about this is that I knew as soon as they came out, it was a guaranteed L. You know, yeah. I knew they were going to eat this loss. I really did like that the Revival were really selling the chair shots from earlier. They had the DDP rib tape on. Mm-hmm. FPOS. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and one of the first things Heavy Machinery did, Tucky got uh, Dash Wilder in a bear hug. Mm-hmm. Strategically makes all the sense in the world. You want to work those ribs. Yeah. And then there's a pretty cool spot where he throws Dash to Otis. And Otis took over the bear hook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that was, was cool. clever. It was creative. That was cool stuff. Yeah, they are, they're, they're a creative team. They man the revival, so yeah. So uh, revival getting beat up, getting their ribs worked over for a while. Eventually, they turn the tides. Um, heavy machinery goes for their finisher, the compactor. Dawson breaks it up with a drop kick, and then Dash rolls up Tucky for the win. Mm-hmm. It was a fun match. Yeah, no, it, it was definitely a fun match. It wasn't. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they gave it a little bit of time, and mm-hmm. like you said, some creativity there. So that's good. Next, Chad Gable interview in the hallway. So uh, Kale asked him, you know, uh, 
you're you're entering King of the Ring as a bit of an underdog. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that? And while he's talking about how he's been an underdog his entire life, like being told he was uh, too small to be a wrestler, he would never make up the Olympic team, he'd never make up his college wrestling team, uh, Shelton Benjamin pops his head out of the locker room. Yeah. Sees what's going on, closes the door, opens again, and puts a sign on the on the door of the locker room. We mm-hmm. don't really see what it is until the interview concludes. Chad walks up to the door to, to go back through it, and it's a sign that says, uh, essentially, if you're not this height, you can't be in the King of the Ring tournament. He wasn't tall enough. No, it was a number. Well, it wasn't official because Shelton put it up himself. He put it up himself in in a manner that really didn't seem that scientific about it. Uh, he just knew that it was like taller than Chad Gable. There had to be some science behind that. <laughs> well, his science was put it at like his nose, at Shelton's own nose. All right, so, so yeah, there is. He, he knew that he was taller than yes, that. yeah, but he knew that Shorty wasn't. Yes, um, so it wasn't a complete guess. It was an educated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. An educated guess, if not I just. Did, I did not see measuring tape though. I would have that figured could have been done. They could have put a little dot on the door. You wouldn't have seen it. Could have measured it before the show. I feel like given this is basically a troll, I didn't really see anything medically maybe, official. About maybe Sheldon song. Benjamin is is really thorough. Are you saying that that Chad Gable is now eliminated from? He's disqualified from King of the Ring. Well, I mean, if Shelton Benjamin is the, is the organizer of this tournament, then obviously. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Know However, that. he is. I missed not. that story beat. However, he is not. Therefore, Chad Gable is still eligible to be in the tournament, Steve. Well, that's good. He is awfully short, though. So maybe he shouldn't. Be. Maybe they should reconsider this. Any event, yeah. So, Shorty G, you think that's a real thing? Is that actually going to be his name? No. no. Well, maybe just for Shelton Benjamin, but nobody else. Yeah. Uh, next, we had Ms. TV special guest Sammy Zayn. Ms. said, uh, "Sammy requested time." Um, it wasn't it all on his? They didn't you see they they like trademarked it or something, right? Trademarked what? Shorty G. No, that was the story behind it. That was oh, like yeah, the story yeah. that people were talking about. Yeah. It's like they trademarked it. So it's probably going to be a real thing, dude. No, oh, dear. <laughs> Uh, so Sammy says, yeah, I won this time because, uh, uh, you say something like it's hard for me to get on TV or something, which isn't exactly the case. But anyways, Sammy said, uh, last night at raw, he had an epiphany, uh, that he was trapped in the cycle of greed and ambition. Yeah. Um, and, but, and he realized that he was at his best when he was fighting for a cause. Yeah. And so, uh, he decided that his path to redemption will be through altruism. He's mm-hmm. going to help people. Mm-hmm. And then Miz is like, oh, really? Who's going to want your help? And, he's, and Sammy says, well, I actually have someone who already mm-hmm. looks at the stage. Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah. And Miz is like, wait, the Intercontinental Champion. He's like, Shinsuke, you're going to let Sammy talk for you? Oh, no, no, no. Miz says something to, to Shinsuke. And then uh, Sammy's like, see, you assume he knows what you're talking about. But you need to talk to me. If you want to express anything to him, mm. and he's like Shin, you're you're really cool with this, and Shin goes, just points to points to Sami Zayn, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Nakamura uh, kicks Miz while Miz and Sami are kind of talking in the back of the head. Follows that with a knee, some more kicks. Sami separates him, and then says, "All right, now you can hit him with the Kinshasa." Mm-hmm. So uh, Sami says some to the effect of, "We understand each other. Um, we're both poets. We're both artists." I think, didn't commentary point out that they had the Shinsuke's first match in NXT? So that was kind of cool, harkening back to a little bit of history. It's always nice when they think. I think Tom Phillips said it was one of the best, best matches he'd ever seen. When they have some sort of motivation. I yeah. Um, I, I think it would be cool. I would be totally fine if Sammy started a, a stable, you know? And Shinsuke was the, the corner piece of it. Mm-hmm. Let's get some more people some I know. screen time with this. I know. You know. I just don't want Sammy to be Nakamura's manager. I know. I know. Or maybe it'll be great. I don't know. I mean, it could be. I mean, Sammy's good in the mic, so I'm, I'm sure it, it, the possibility is there for it to be good. I just, I'm just at the position that I don't think Nakamura needs a manager. I don't think he does either. However, I really like both guys. Mm-hmm. And if they can do something, if they, if they can make it good, then I'm fine with it. I, I agree with you totally. Um, that's why like, I would kind of prefer it to be like... A larger stable than it would stable. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, I don't know. If if I guess I guess it's this. The Sami Zayn that we've seen over the past couple of months since his return, I don't think is a good fit personality wise for what Shinsuke does. Uh, if Sammy can pivot, like we kind of saw him do in his promo last night, this epiphany that he had. 
if he can pivot to something a bit more sinister and less goofy and floppy around and stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. all that dancing stuff. Mm-hmm. If he can pivot to something that's a bit more interesting, then I'm more willing to give it a chance. Oh yeah, no, I agree there. It's just it's it, it like it's, I think it could be in, in theory a, a interesting pairing, but at the same time, it's just really they're gonna Nakamura doesn't need a manager. Yeah, he doesn't need a manager. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Next up, we had uh, Brian and uh, Daniel Bryan and Rowan backstage. Uh, Brian tells the, uh, the attacker, the hidden attacker, that uh, Roman is on his way. Yes. Uh, after that, we had Shane and Kevin Owens backstage. Shane asked Kevin Owens to apologize for putting his hands on Elias. He says, uh, one thing I've ne- you never did was apologize for touching her, putting your hands on an official because we mm-hmm. don't do that. Yeah. And then Kevin Owens says, all right, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I was out of line. And then Shane says, you were. And uh, once you keep in mind, the next time you put your hands on an official, you're going to be fired. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fired. Fired. So that leads to King of the Ring match, Elias versus Kevin Owens. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was actually, like, not a terrible match. Yeah, until it was bad at all. Yeah. Like, Elias, I'm not really huge on Elias as a wrestler because, I don't know, his character doesn't really lend himself to having, like, huge, awesome matches. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he probably could put on a good match if he wanted to. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, anyways, go ahead. Uh, right before a, commercial, a mid-match commercial break, Shane walks down to ringside. Um, it was funny because uh, there isn't a situation where Elias was selling something, and Shane comes down, so Owens walks the ropes. And so when that happened, I was like, are they just going to have Elias sell for the next two minutes during this mm, commercial break yeah. and have Owens stand there and, and wonder what the hell Shane's doing? Yeah. Didn't work out that way. They came no. back and there was action now. Um, they showed it because uh, Kevin Owens hit a frog splash off the apron. Mm-hmm. Uh, finished though, saw uh, Owens hit a cannonball off the apron on Elias. He goes to pick Elias up to get him back in the ring, and Shane stops him. He takes off his jacket underneath Shane O'Mac ref jersey. Yeah. Owen kind of puts it all together. Mm-hmm. To Realize he's in a tight spot. Oh, I'm in a tight spot. So back in the ring. Uh, Shane kind of takes over for the, the ref who was refereeing the match. Uh, KO goes for a stunner. Elias evades, uh, pushes Owens towards Shane. Um, Shane puts, or sorry, Owens puts on the brakes because he's not supposed to touch a referee. Elias rolls him up. Shane gets down and makes a fast count. Elias wins. Yeah. What if, Eli- what if Owens had kicked out of that fast count, man? Yeah. And then they can find another way for him to lose. So Kevin Owens officially. Not King of the Ring <laughs> bowed out in the first round. I get the feeling I was looking at that bracket and we kind of had it wrong. The final, I thought, didn't you say yesterday you thought the finals could have been Joe versus Drew? Or you thought it was going to be for the Raw side? Yeah, but they're on the same, they're, they're on the Raw side. Yeah. On the Raw side, they're not, they can't face off. In oh, the, no, I didn't, I guess I didn't say that then. Quarters, yeah. Yeah. Or they, because I, I looked at it, I was like, wait, that didn't make any sense. No, because I thought, I said Ricochet was going to be true. Ricochet is going to beat Drew. And then he'll face Samoa Joe. Drew then goes on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, I said. I think, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know. When you look at it, because then Baron and Miz. Baron will win that one. And he'll face, who else on the roster? There's another face that is coming uh, out of the roster. That match already happened. It's um, Cedric. Cedric, that's right. So, yeah. Are they leading to a Cedric versus Drew finals? For Raw side, for the Raw that's side. That's entirely possible. Yeah. Or... It's going to end up being Ricochet versus Baron on the raw side, which might be more likely. They might they might roll with Ricochet on this. I don't know. I don't know either. Because they talk about Drew a lot. If Ricochet beats him in that first round matchup, that'd be huge for Ricochet. Mm-hmm. And it'd give Drew more fire, mm-hmm. maybe. Whereas if they just have Drew go on, yeah. it's not quite as interesting. Yeah, unless the idea is that he's going to face Cedric in the semifinals, given the story they've kind of told him. Yeah. Yeah. Then who would come out of the SmackDown side? Well, we're going to have Buddy. Buddy's taking on Mustafa Ali next week. Winner of that faces Elias. Yeah. So pr- I'm guessing it'll probably be Buddy. Could end up being in the finals finals. It could be Drew Buddy or it could be Imagine Ricochet Buddy, Andrade. Imagine if it's Buddy and Ricochet in the finals. <sighs> Man. I don't know if they'd pull the crowd apart like that because they're both hot right now. Uh, but it, I wish be, they would. It'd be a phenomenal match. It would be the best match. Sometimes I need to realize that just having two really good wrestlers in a phenomenal match is enough to get them both over. People will cheer for really good wrestling. You know, both time, both weeks now, 
I mean, I think last night it was more because of the NWO Rowan thing. But uh, SmackDown on, on Twitter had a pretty strong trending presence because mm-hmm. of Buddy Murphy. Mm-hmm. And then this week because of NWO Rowan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's get to the, the last segment. Roman Reigns is walking backstage. He walks in the locker room where uh, Daniel Bryan, Rowan, and the accused attacker are sitting. Um, Daniel Bryan says, told you we knew who it was. Uh, here it is. Uh, and it reveals the attacker as essentially NWO Rowan. So we have Rowan and NWO Rowan staring at each other. It's very interesting. Yeah. Daniel Bryan in the background, and then they pan over to Roman Reigns. He does this. Just sort of very confused. Yeah. The very strange and, scene. And uh, like everything, WB, it lingers for about a beat and a half too, too long, long. <laughs> before way, the show ends. Way too long. I wish that they would have seen if it was if it was normal. I just wish they could even have beeped it out. If, Ro- if Roman immediately when he saw him was like, "What is this?" Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, I know. But like, you could have easily put the Curb Your Enthusiasm music. Over I know it. someone did on Twitter. Oh, did they? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, if I'm put in that situation and I see NWO Rowan there sitting across from Rowan, I'm Get like, "Get out of here!" It's like, you're, just, you're nice try. <laughs> I'm not buying this. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You're trying to fool me here? Yeah. Get out of here. Too many. There's they, WWE portrays too many of the Like, if you think about it logically, too many of their people are just dullards. Like, Roman's in there. Well, I mean, it's, that's how they, they, a lot of faces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. They book as gullible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like how, why didn't how, Roman just say, why, why wouldn't he have just piped up, wait, who is this guy? What's your name? What's your deal? What is this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Instead I understand just, they want to end on some weird cliffhanger. I know, they I get do. that, but still. Imagine if you everyone said, what the F? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the beep? <laughs> some light profanity there. Uh, before we get to questions, yeah, uh, let's see here. It's your birthday present. Oh, wow. Do you know what this could be? No. I like it's wrapped in newspaper, though. It is wrapped. Yeah, it's totally wrapped in newspaper. <laughs> did you get this directly from the source? I did. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. There's we are now Yolo County Tag Team Champions, courtesy of AJ Kirsch. Awesome. Thank at, you. At the, this is the, they're the authentic ones. The real deal. Yep. That fit thing. Look at that. Oh, great. He's selling these for twenty five bucks. Pretty cool. That's great. Well, thank you. I feels good to be a champion. I know, right? You're a champion. Thank You're you, best. man. You're best. It's so nice. So there we go. Uh, Name explain asked, did you guys ever talk about Triple H's birthday party? Think you'll get a huge kick out of it. Did you read about that? No, what? It's his 50th, I think, birthday. Okay. So, uh, gosh, who played? There's a band who played there. There's like a knife, uh, not knife, sorry, axe throwing station. Mm, gosh. Where Vince apparently loved. Oh. He was just there throwing axes. God, what band played? That sounds so correct. I mean, I read was about it. Was that a Motorhead like cover band? No. Was it Code Orange? No. It's a more recent band. Someone might have just posted something about it on our Twitter. Here, go ahead and. Uh, All right, I'll look at other questions here. Were there other super chats? Yes. Um, futile bread. Power rank who from WB left the, the, the porta potty a mess? Oh, it's heavy machinery. Oh, yeah. Or Lars. Yeah. I feel oh, like yeah, Lars, Lars, Lars is messy. Lars, Lars for sure. He's a messy pooper. <laughs> um, poop in there. Let's see here. Johnny Ralston. Was the dude at the end not Luke Harper? No, Johnny. No. That was not Luke Harper. No, it didn't look anything like Luke Harper. No. Dom. Power rank top five picks to join Sammy Goon. Yeah, oh. so if it's a if it's a faction, let's get a, a tag team, uh, somebody from the women's division, and then a, a mid carter. All right, this is what Pressing Sheet had about uh, Triple H's party. This is let's from uh, tri- from uh, X Pac. That's what he talked about it. So um, they had a f- his fiftieth birthday was in New Hampshire. Uh, and the first part of it, there was a place where there was like jet skis and boats and go-karts and stuff. Uh, axe throwing station says Vince was glued to. And he says Vince was jacked when he showed up. <laughs> he looked around. 
Uh, he looked incredible. Uh, other people there, uh, HBK, Batista, Holland Nash, Flair, Lenny McMahon, Matt Bloom, Tools, Adam Jones, a guitar player. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then at night, there was a second party. This is interesting, which featured a Triple H-inspired drone show in the sky and performances from ZZ Top and John Fogarty. What? Did ZZ Top and John Fogarty play together? I don't know, man. Did ZZ it's like Top... a rock and, roll, rock and Roll Hall of Fame <laughs> performance. Did ZZ Top play some Creedence? I, I didn't peg a Triple H to be a Creedence guy. You never know, man. I got my Creedence tape. Uh, again, this is from the Pearl Swing Sheet. Quote, X-Pac was the first... Says the first part of the day had lobster meat for guests, while the second had prime rib options. And that Vince McMahon was dancing at the party and allegedly had some good moves. Ah, was it like that uh, old thing? Oh, the pile driver thing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Johnny Ralston. Oh, sorry. You answered that one. Not Luke Harper. No, I don't think so. Uh, Gamecast. Happy birthday, Larson. Thank you. Can we get uh, Larry Zabisco reacting to The Fiend? The Fiend's in the wall! He's in the wall! He's behind the king! Uh, Epico, thank you again for your, for your generosity. Uh, Nick C. Steve, if Buddy is Korg, ooh, who would be Meek? Uh, so Meek is his like, little friend who doesn't talk that much. So I don't know who that would be. Uh, who well, does? If it was on 205 Live, it could have been Tony Nice. <laughs> No, that's good. No, that's actually really good because they were body guys. Uh, Lindsay Desitel, where is Rusev? He would be great for King of the Rings. See that picture of him with no beard? Yeah, it was he weird. He was doing some leg press. Yeah, it was weird. And like short hair. They're totally gone, man. They What are they doing with them? Like not, less than nothing. That's crazy. I know. Rich Hardesty, Epico, super chatting from his yacht. I know, right? Um, and another one from Ritt says, uh, going in raw, now under control of Big Epico Fish Industry. <laughs> going in raw, official sponsor, Big Epico Fish, Big Fish. Uh, Yashuvi, Yashusvi, sorry. Uh, I still think Revival and Orton are sick together. Yeah, I like it, man. That I should be a proper a good, faction. Yeah, I think F-T-R-K-O. I F-T-R-K-O. Forever the R-K-O. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Most three devastating words, letters, numbers. Entertainment, sports. Sports, entertainment. From that recall, I forgot to do a Matt chat reminder. I'll do that real quick. All right, let's see here. I have Patreon questions up. I brought a roast beef wrap today, man. I'm going to treat myself to... Ooh, to what? A, a birthday lunch from Panda Express today. Oh, nice. Vegetables, teriyaki chicken. I like it. It's a chest day. I get my protein in. Perfect. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Thayer Thabata. What's what, worse? What? Thayer Thabata. Thabata. What's worse, Vince taking control of NXT from Triple H or Sony taking control of Spider-Man from Marvel? I'm going to do a video on that for my on the Friendoville Friendo channel, right. rather, because uh, I kind of think it's much to do about nothing. Yeah, I saw some of the stuff you're saying. I agree with you. People are, like, freaking out big time over it, but the bottom line is, like, it, this, this is my, my main thesis. Number one, uh, it's, they'll come together. Mm -hmm. it, that, that'll, it'll happen. And number two, it will literally be years until Spider-Man is, is is a necessity in mm -hmm. other realms of mm -hmm. the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like the event. Spoiler alert: If you haven't seen Endgame yet, Tony Stark is dead. And I kind of think, although I haven't seen it yet, I'm trying to see it this weekend. In Far From Home, it seems like one of the the threads there is closure on Tony Stark's death. Mm -hmm. he, there's no reason for him to bring up any aspect of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the next Spider-Man movie. Yeah, I I, I, just, I don't I don't yeah. see why it like creatively they can get around it and it's the same creative team besides Kevin Feige who's more of a big picture guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. Anyways, is the uh, what's, what's his name? Uh, Tom Holland still gonna be Spider Man? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's still on for two more movies. Okay. Amy Pascal, the producer, still okay. on for two more movies. Okay. The director's on for two more movies. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. so anyways, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Uh, b -b 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 uh, Alex Foster, what would be your decree as King of the Ring? So you know, kings. It's like they're 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 the royal decrees. Yes. Yeah, you st you get on the throne. They put the the crown on you, the scepter, the felt cape. My first decree as king is to all competitors naked. This point on. 
That's First thing I, I do if I had if I were King of the Ring and had and were King of making any decrees, like I'm gonna get rid of this ridiculous looking king garbage. Wow. Because it looks cheap. Bring out the royal garbage can. Throw it in there. Light on fire, exactly. Light on fire. That's the first thing I would do. Good. Mine is nudity. Uh, let's see here. Leonardo Alexander Araujo asks, Will the fiend destroy the king of the ring winner? Mm, probably I not. I feel like that would kill all momentum of king of the ring it winner. It totally would. Yeah, and if the point like is the, to make a star. The Fiend's the purpose right now is coming out and putting the mendable claw on all the old timers that come yeah. out. Yeah. That seems to be his primary MO. Yeah. Uh, well, that's interesting. Wolfpack for life. What's something that you wish that would be made, a, made into a T-shirt? He says he'd wear a Randy Orton stupid shirt. Uh, something I wish that would be made into a t-shirt, uh, a rib tape t-shirt. There you go. I mean, you look That's at the right answer. Rib tape. That's the right answer. That is the right answer. Uh, Greg Morris. I love Sami Zayn, but is this good for Nakamura? If they do become a stable, who else joins them? Oh, yeah. Somebody else asked that also. So who would join? He says heel Apollo <laughs> Crews. That'd be cool. I would love that. They lingered on, his, on him for a bit after that loss to Andrade. So hopefully they'll give him something to do. Yeah. Uh, Rich says they want to end, draw in viewers and had great stories and they end SmackDown like that. Oh, I think it got people talking. Yeah, it was silly. It was goofy as heck. Yeah, it, it was goofy as heck, but and it was underwhelming. But in just how weird it was. Oh, Gloria Steve Klein has a good question. Hey, friendos, have you two listened to any of the bands from the shirts that Rowan wears every week? I have not. I've heard of some of them. Yeah. Um. Like I'm not a huge metal guy. Yeah. But I've heard of some of them. Yeah. I'm not really a huge metal guy. Like I've, I've. I think you want to be a metal guy. I've always wanted to be. I'm just too mellow for it, man. Mm -hmm. I just can't. It's like, yeah, I want to, I want to feel that aggression, but it's just not in me, dude. Give me Sublime. <laughs> I can't stand Sublime. I'm not really <laughs> into them either. <laughs> So what what is it with this town though? Sacramento is a big sublime town. Like if you listen to ninety four seven now, it's, know, it's, it's literally twenty four seven. It's either Sublime or Lana Del Rey's Sublime cover. Yeah, that was that's an odd cover. It's a little bit weird. That's a good that's a good song. It's an all right song, and it's like a really faithful cover. Yeah, it's too faithful. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, she just slows down the tempo a little bit. But yeah, the instrumentation is largely the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Uh, what tag team would you want to see join uh, Nakamura and Zayn's new chaos? Apparently, Mustafa Ali is kind of bummed out about that because they said, so they just dropped this Mustafa Ali thing, and he said yes. But I wonder, I mean, that might be, maybe that'll be like the first Nakamura thing they do is yeah, Ali. That could be. A tag team, huh? Forgotten Sons. <laughs> That's not bad, actually. Yeah. That's not terrible. Uh... Blake Whitehouse, I like this question. Who do, what wrestlers does WWE send in a tank to invade AEW? Can't you just send like the same? It's undisputed era. Undisputed. Oh yeah, yeah. Except it'd be their like their uh, their car, their convertible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got to be undisputed era. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That that works That's on many levels. Yeah, it's totally got to be it. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Julian Roussel, how will this Owens versus Shane feud end? Another Hell in a Cell match? I thought about that, but we really don't need another 40 minute Hell in a Cell match between the two of them. That's how long the first one was, like 39 minutes. That's too much. It was way too much. Yeah, I don't know, man. I really don't. I don't want to see that, though. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mondo, what are the chances Owens takes out Elias and Shane's ends up inserting himself in the King Ring tournament in his place? I would kind of doubt that because that would almost necessitate Shane like going far into it because he's sort of booked as this like monster guy. I would think the more likely scenario would be Kevin Owens taking somebody out and putting himself in the tournament, sort of like what Shane did at Crown Jewel. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. I don't know how they justify it. Like you know, like how does he have the authority to do that? Yeah, I know. I don't know either. I mean, they could do it. You can write anything, really. It's yeah, wrestling. pretty much. None of it makes sense. No. Uh, let's see here. Like, why would Roman Reigns just be like, all right, well, there's Rowan and NWO Rowan here. 
Yeah, me here. Check and mate there, Daniel Bryan. Yeah. <laughs> is, this, is this guy a wrestler? Can I have a match against him now? <laughs> right. <laughs> he's, just like, he's just like, oh, I give up. And it's like, this is too much. This is too much. <laughs> he's just like looking at Daniel Bryan. Just, just leave me alone, okay? Just leave me alone. It's like, I'm not going to go anywhere near any cars, <laughs> near anything that could follow me. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I'm yeah, he just starts. He's like, you know, it's my own fault. <laughs> I really should just watch where I'm going. <laughs> Why did I park my car in the middle of a parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> Why was I walking around backstage? I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't have been doing that. I shouldn't walk through narrow corridors at all. Why do I look at the ground when I walk? I need to be paying attention to what yes. I'm doing. Why didn't I listen to Kayla in the first place? <laughs> she told me to stop. I didn't stop. <laughs> if I'd stopped, maybe I wouldn't be in this mess. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, let's see here. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think that's good. I think. Oh, wait, wait, oh no, 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 no! Hold on a second. Hmm. I almost forgot the stupid Discord. Oh, <laughs> let's see what they shame. have to say. Let's see what they have. Oh, to say. Oh, they got the XFL logo. Oh, the XFL logos. That are sounds out. like prime non-news. Non-news. Oh man, it go way back. Okay, let's see here. Bunch of happy birthdays to Larson. Thank you, thank you. Uh, a couple of Crizzly faces. Oh dear. They have a Crizzly emoji there. Uh huh. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Alex Z says, "Should we get Roman in some kind of dream sequence where Hornswoggle tells him backwards that NWO Rowan is not the man?" Prime Twin Peaks, right there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Some of these names are kind of cool. Greg Morris says, Larson, uh, would you take 10 Walter Chops or two Sweet Steve? If they put a gun to your head, what would you do? 10 Walter Chops, man. I feel like that'd be a good story, too. Exactly. I took 10 Walter Chops. Get up. Tell me your name now. Your name is Tyler Bate. Sure, sure, Walter. Chop. What's your name now? Tyler Bate, sure. Tell me your name now. Tyler Tyler, Tyler Bate, no, 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 no. Tyler Bate, Tyler Bate, Tyler Bate, Tyler Bate, no, 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 no. The Tampa Bay Vipers. Well, here, save this. Oh, for non news. Yeah, non news, man. All right, let me scroll through this uh, Discord uh, mess. Uh, oh, good question here from Jimmy Thomas. Which haircut would look better on Steve, Shinsuke's or PCO's? What's PCO? PCO isn't just like the weird. Something like that, maybe. Or is it just like a... What's PCO wear sport these days? I don't recall. I have to look that up. PCO. 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 It's just like a... It's kind of like a mohawk type. I don't like I don't like that. That's too That's too short. I'm going to say Shinsuke's. PCOs would probably look better on me technically. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if you could pull off Nakamura. That's a lot of hair. It is a lot of hair. I don't know if you can handle that much hair. Maybe too much hair. It could be too much hair. I dare say too much hair. Maybe. Uh, let's see here. Tyler Bate. Okay, here we go. Uh, Hafty. Who in 205 Live has the highest ceiling in WWE? Isn't that like this? should be like a 205 Live question. So we'll just do that one tomorrow. Oh, I remember that one. <laughs> We're not going to remember it. Uh, who has the highest ceiling in 205 Live right now? Right now? Drew. It's got to be Drew Gulak, right? It's Drew, I think, and then it's probably Oni Lorcan. Oni Lorcan is busting through every ceiling that guy seemingly has. Mm-hmm. He's great. He's terrific. Um, although, if you consider some of the, the people that were in that match yesterday is on 205 Live, I guess like uh, Isaiah Scott had a 205 Live lower third rather than NXT. Oh, yeah. Like him or Angel Garza. Swerve could be huge. Mm-hmm. He could be big. Mm-hmm. I like Angel Garza, too. Oh, Angel Garza's amazing. Yeah, he's pretty great. Uh yeah. Anyways, that's it. I think, and then we got overrun coming up. We got overrun. So we got chat trivia today. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, anyways, thanks everybody for thank tuning you in. everybody. Thank you for the birthday wishes, Steve. Thank you for this prestigious title. Prestigious, very prestigious, prestigious, prestigious. Absolutely. prestigious. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that Heavy Machinery didn't roll with these. I know. You know, that could have been a thing. They don't want them. They're all ours now. They're ours now, dude. We're the only people who have these. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.
Be a part of Going In Raw today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Starting at $1 a month, you can enjoy Going In Raw ad-free, gain access to the daily 30-minute Going In Raw post-show, exclusive merchandise, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description.